Good morning. This is Radio Good News. The goal of this program is to draw all people to the love of Jesus Christ. I want everyone to know and experience the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Those are key to a Holy Spirit-filled and successful Christian life. I will focus on God's love because God's love is wonderful. I'm John Thornton. I'll be reading from the Bible, the New Revised Standard Version, because that is God's word to us in our modern language. Let's begin today with Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, his steadfast love endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, his steadfast love endures forever. Out of my distress I called on the Lord. The Lord answered me and set me in a broad place. With the Lord on my side I do not fear. What can mortals do to me? The Lord is on my side to help me. I shall look in triumph on those who hate me. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in mortals. It is better to take refuge in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. All nascent nations surrounded me. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me, surrounded me on every side. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. They surrounded me like bees. They blazed like a fire of thorns. In the name of the Lord, I cut them off. I was pushed hard so that I was falling, but the Lord helped me. The Lord is my strength and my might. He has become my salvation. There are glad songs of victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord does valiantly. I shall not die, but I shall live and recount the deeds of the Lord. The Lord has punished me severely, but he did not give me over to death. Open to me the gates of righteousness that I may enter through them and give thanks to the Lord. This is the gate of the Lord. The righteous shall enter through it. I thank you that you have answered me and become my salvation. The stone that the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing. It is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, we beseech you, give us success. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. We bless you from the house of the Lord. The Lord is God, and he has given us light. Bind the festal processions with branches up to the horns of the altar. You are my God, and I will give thanks to you. You are my God, I will extol you. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. For his steadfast love endures forever. Those are God's words from Psalm 118. Our music today is for my daughter Janelle, who just graduated fifth grade and does play the violin. This is Randy Stonehill. Rachel Delavorias, with her thick eyeglasses and her plain Jane face, sat beside me in my fifth grade class, looking so terribly out of place. Rachel played the violin. Classical music was out of style She couldn't control all her wild brown hair Her nervous laughter and her awkward smile And it was clear that she'd never be one of us With her dowdy clothes and her violin And a name like Rachel Delavoria But I'd pass by her house in the evening Going to play with my best friend Ray And the music floating from her window Spoke the things that Rachel could never say Rachel Delavorias Was eating her lunch as the boys walked by Rachel is ugly, she heard them shout 
She sat on the schoolyard bench and cried And it was clear that she'd never be one of us With her dowdy clothes and her violin And a name like Rachel Delavolius And every year the hedge got higher As it grew around Rachel's house Like the secret wall inside her That she built to keep all the heartache out Rachel Delivorius Moved back east with her family Now she's dressed in a beautiful gown Standing on stage with the symphony Rachel plays the violin But every night when the lights go down I wonder if she still remembers those days And cruel little boys in this one-horse town And it was clear that she'd never be one of us With her dowdy clothes and her violin And a name like Rachel Delavorius A name like Rachel Delavorius That's been Randy Stonehill. We'll hear from him again at the end of the program. Stay tuned for that. Turn with me, if you can, to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, verses 15 through 29. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will know them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many deeds of power in your name? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Go away from me, you evildoers. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat on the house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell, and great was its fall. Now when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority, and not as their scribes. Those are God's words from Matthew chapter 7, verses 15 through 29. When I was a child, one of my favorite books was Virginia Lee Burton's Mike Mulligan and the Steam Shovel. Do you remember that book? It may have been one of my favorites because my dad was a great home builder. In this book, first published in 1939, we have the story of Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel named Mary Ann. They stated that they could dig as much in a day as a hundred men could dig in a week, but they were never sure if that was true until it came to pass that they were able to secure the chance to dig the cellar for the foundation of the town hall in the little town of Popperville. They agreed to dig the cellar in just one day, and if they were not able to finish, then they would not be paid. So Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann started to dig that cellar, and as they worked, a crowd gathered to see if they could actually dig the cellar in just one day. So as the people watched, Mike and Mary Ann dug a little faster and a little better. Soon the corners were getting finished and dirt was flying everywhere. The day was going by fast and the digging was going even faster. Just before sunset, 
All four corners of the cellar were finished, and it was proven that Mike Mulligan and his steam shovel, Marianne, could actually dig as much in a single day as 100 men could dig in a week. In our passage today, we see a parable of two builders, the wise and the foolish. Now remember, this is a parable. Parables are a specific style of storytelling which Jesus often used to make his listeners ponder divine truth. Parables usually have one, two, or three main characters. To gain an accurate understanding and have a proper interpretation of parables, we must acknowledge that Jesus intends us to learn a lesson from each main character in the parable. In today's passage, there are two builders, the wise and the foolish. These builders are representative of each and every human being. For we all are faced with the choice. Will we build wisely or foolishly? And in this symbolic formula, we see that the things we build are our lives. And the storms that blow and the rains that occur are symbolic of the trials and problems in life. In this passage, whose main idea is about the difference between the wise and the foolish builders, Jesus starts with a warning about false prophets. We must read this in context because false prophets can cause us to build our lives on a shaking foundation of sand. Jesus said, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Here Jesus uses a symbolic formula to show that true Christian leaders are gentle and loving, like sheep, while false prophets are carnivores who seek to rip and devour. Jesus then gives another quick little parable. You will know them, the false prophets, by their fruit. Are grapes gathered from thorns or figs from thistles? In the same way, every good tree bears good fruit, but the bad tree bears bad fruit. Yes, a Christian ministry will produce fruit of the Holy Spirit, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control, those are the hallmarks of true Christian leadership. They are the good fruit. But a false leader will only produce rotten fruit, such as hatred, anger, malice, division, slander, violence, or selfishness. As Jesus says, a good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Thus you will know them by their fruits. So the wise and foolish builders will be influenced directly by their leaders. Jesus, our Lord and Savior, says, Everyone who hears these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on a rock. And then he contrasts the wise with the foolish when he says, And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on sand. So the first thing we see is that everyone will hear the words of Christ. As John 3, 16 through 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. In our lives, we will always be building Oh, you may not be a great home builder like my dad who built thousands of houses, but you are a builder nonetheless. You will build your entire life. As a child, you needed to build a vocabulary just to be able to get your ideas out. As a little toddler, you could sometimes point your finger and scream, Wah! and usually it would be sufficient to get the idea to your parents. But as a growing child, you found it increasingly more difficult and complex, and you needed to build a list of words, and so you were a builder. If you came from a loving home, your list of words included quality words, care, nurture, compassion, love. But if your home was rotten, then your list of words included evil sayings and abusive language. How did you build? And you have been a builder as you became an adult. You either decided to marry or not, thus you were building a family. You either attended college or not, and thus you were building your intellect, thus you were building. And as an adult, 
You have the choice to build people up by using quality themes and empowering words and comments, or you can be a hateful destroyer and seek to build up animosity and evil. Thus, you will be building either a wise home or a foolish one. Yes, in so many ways, you are either a wise or foolish builder. And so we see that we are all builders. We are all building. Do you follow a blueprint? Or is your building just a ramshackle jumble? You know, the best blueprint is found through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, in the Bible. Jesus says that the wise builder will build on rock. As Isaiah 26, 4 reads, Trust in the Lord forever, for in the Lord God you have an everlasting rock. And in 1 Samuel 2, 2 we read, There is no holy one like the Lord. No one beside you, there is no rock like our God. And again, we see this in Psalm 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. And who is this rock? Just who is the stone on which we build our lives? Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace. In 1 Peter 2, 4 through 9, we read, Come to him, a living stone, though rejected by mortals, yet chosen and precious in God's sight. And like living stones, let yourselves be built into a spiritual house, to be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, See, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. To you then who believe, he is precious. But for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the very head of the corner, and a stone that makes them stumble, and a rock that makes them fall. They stumble because they disobey the word, as they were destined to do. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that you may proclaim the mighty acts of him who called you out of darkness and into his marvelous light. So yes, Jesus is the rock on which the wise build their lives. But just what are those winds and rains and floods in the parable? Well, all those storms are symbolic of the problems we have in life. These are problems. As Jesus said in John 16, I have said this to you so that in me you may have peace. In the world you face persecution, but take courage. I have conquered the world. When Leonardo da Vinci was painting the wonderful work, The Last Supper, he chose a young and vibrant looking man to be the model for Jesus Christ. This young man's name was Pietri Bandinelli. Leonardo painted the Christ figure, and the young model was then dismissed. It took Leonardo many, many years to completely paint his Last Supper. Near the end of those many, many years, there was only one figure left to paint, that of the betrayer, Judas Iscariot. So as Leonardo walked through the streets, he thought about who to use as the model for Judas. And then one day, Leonardo saw the right person. This man was hunched over and stooping, he had an evil, snarled, hard look on his face. Yes, this man would be the perfect model for Judas. And as the man sat there in the studio for the painting, he commented, Maestro Leonardo, I was here in this studio about 25 years ago. Back then, you used me to model the Christ figure. Yes, as we build our lives, the things we do will impact the way we turn out will be wise or foolish. And you know, some of the storms in life we seldom consider are the immense storm of peer pressure. Yes, peer pressure can cause a person to build a house of misery rather than a house for holiness. Immoral drug use is often begun because of peer pressure. And this includes the so-called legal drugs of tobacco and alcohol. But not only do people get messed up as they build their lives by falling into that pit of drug abuse, but other immoral activities also happen because of peer pressure. And peer pressure is evident for little boys and for little girls. Little boys are led into pornography often by peer pressure. And little girls do all kinds of things that are evil because of peer pressure. It all starts in the heart, the foundation. 
Adam and Eve discovered this in the garden, where Satan tempted Eve through a discussion, and in a way, he exerted peer pressure. He quarreled with Eve, and she did sin. But the sin began when she was tempted in her heart. She desired the forbidden fruit. She craved the knowledge that would come from that first bite. And she lusted after being like God. Yes, the fall came about in part because of peer pressure. In James 1, 14 through 15, we read, But one is tempted by one's own desire, being lured and enticed by it. Then when that desire is conceived, it gives birth to sin. And that sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. So we can be wise and build on the rock, or we can be foolish and build on the sand. It might seem easier to build on the sand. It might be easier, less effort, and it might go with the flow of the peer pressure. But building on the rock is successful, even though it takes more effort. But it is worth it. In 1 John 5, 11 through 12, we read, And this is the testimony. God gave us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Whoever has the Son has life. Whoever does not have the Son of God does not have life. Yes, in some ways, it is harder to dig down deeply and build on the stone. It is hard to stand for Jesus Christ when all else seems to be blowing you down. Yes, building on the rock is tough. It can mean loss of friends or family or position in life. And you may even have doubts yourself. The house on the sand might sparkle and look really good. And it might even be more dazzling and aesthetically pleasing than a simple house on the rock. But when the storms come, all will be tested by the weather. And storms will come. They always do. As the floodwaters rise and the winds howl and the rains beat against our houses, the wisdom or foolishness of the builder is revealed. And when those winds of peer pressure blow, will you stand firm? And when those waters of doubt and fear and worry rise and you feel up to your neck in hot water, will you be on the rock? And when the rains of pain and sorrow and agony pour down on you so hard you wish you had an umbrella, will you still be standing on the stone? Well, when that final storm blows in and your earthly life is snatched away from you, what will you see? Or when the heavens part and the angelic trumpets blow and the Son of God returns in glory, will you be on the rock? What kind of builder are you? Remember Jesus said, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. On that day many might say to me, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons in your name and do many deeds of power in your name? For if we've built our house on the rock, we will be safe and secure. But if we build on the sand, we are lost. Building our lives on Jesus is not a simple thing of some head knowledge, but it is rather all about the loving relationship we have with our Savior in our heart. We can know that our house and our lives are built on the rock, which is faith in Jesus Christ, our Master and Messiah. Ephesians 4.15 reads, Speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ. But when the times of stress and trial come, what happens to the foolish builders? Jesus said, Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like the foolish man who built his house on sand. The rains fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and beat against that house, and it fell. And great was its fall. Oh, how great a fall when your life is based on anything other than faith in Jesus Christ. In the end, money cannot save you. In the end, church attendance cannot save you. In the end, drugs cannot save you. In the end, the best medical care available cannot save you. In the end, an expensive missile defense system cannot save you. In the end, wealth, power, status, nothing can save you except Jesus Christ. For only Jesus can save you. In John 14, 6, Jesus said, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. And as our parable tells us, to put your trust in anyone or anything other than Jesus Christ, the rock of ages, 
is to be foolish. Are you living your life wisely or foolishly? Your answer may be the most important answer you ever give. Just who is Jesus Christ to you? For Jesus wants us to be wise builders. He's given us the blueprint in the New Testament. Do you know the plan? And now, do you remember how that children's book, Mike Mulligan and the Steam Shovel, Mary Ann, concluded? Mike Mulligan and Mary Ann had dug the cellar in just one day. And that was as much as a hundred men could dig in a week, but they were trapped in the cellar. They had forgotten to dig a way out. So after a wise little child suggested that the steam shovel Mary Ann become the town hall's new steam furnace and Mike become the custodian, it was all settled. Mike and Mary Ann would live out the rest of their days right there in Popperville. And when we are wise builders and we have built our house on the faith in Jesus Christ, our master on Messiah, on the rock, we too can live out the rest of our days right there on the rock with Jesus Christ in the paradise that he has provided for us. I'm John Thornton. Thanks for listening to Radio Good News. I encourage you to seek out a church family where you can worship, be encouraged, and build your life on the rock of Jesus Christ. For this area offers many fine Bible-believing and teaching churches of various denominations. You can write to me at Radio Good News, P.O. Box 1722, Sioux Falls, South Dakota, 57101. Thanks so much for your cards and letters. I really appreciate them. May you richly know the blessings of the God who was, the God who is, and the God who is to come again. And always remember the Bible says love is patient, love is kind. Love is not envious or boastful or arrogant or rude. Love does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. Love does not rejoice in wrongdoing, but rejoices in the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never ends. So love Jesus Christ our Lord with all your heart, strength, soul, and mind, and love your neighbors as yourselves. And remember, as Christian people, we are even commanded to love our enemies. We'll finish today with Randy Stonehill. Left me lonely and lost and so blue Then I'd stay